Okay, we'll go there. Louina. And we'll go there. We are? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Beautifully Broken Podcast. And the Well Power Podcast. And the Well Power Podcast. You know, sometimes we do things together. Sometimes we do things together. And actually, we just um, came back from a whole month together in Maui. Mm. And our last Biohacking Bestie podcast, we recapped the Biohacking Congress in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since our last collab. It has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. The um, so, so basically, we had this idea. We kind of wanted to talk. Um, we wanted to talk about the trip that we just took because we had, you know, for the audience at home, we had some wild stuff happen when we landed on the island of Maui. Beautiful island of Maui. The, Alo Aloha. Aloha. What's maybe, alo maybe this should be biohacking besties. Aloha down regulation. <laughs> what's what's aloha mean? Aloha, uh, alo. Just lo the the direct translation when you look at the etymology of the word is uh, alo, is breath, and ha is a life of being. Mm. And so it's the word that I chose for. 2023 i choose a word every year for the last seven years yeah so i chose aloha because it really meant it spoke to me in the breath world it also means kindness and welcome and all the wonderful things that the hawaiian culture has brought to it now is the time we practice aloha that's great so maybe i'll give maybe i'll give what went down <laughs> yeah. and then we can walk into how we handled it <laughs> the mode of processing so essentially i had never been to the island of maui never been to Hawaii in my life. And it also comes on the heels of 18 months of working without a vacation by choice. This is my bad. And so me and Kristen had planned, I'll say more or less, Kristen had planned and orchestrated. She had got plane tickets and found housing and rented a Jeep for a whole month in Maui while she was away doing a training for Sherpa Breath and Cold. And when we landed, we got our Jeep and we drove to our housing. And as we pulled into the parking lot and parked our car and found our way up to the desk of the resort where we're staying, we quickly learned that the housing was not real. It was fraudulent. Um, the $5,000 we had put down for the month was a scam. Was a, gone. was a scam and it was gone. And so, you know, learn, I guess learning ensues. So we were literally sitting there with no place to live. It's December. We're going into the holiday season of travel in Hawaii, which you can imagine. You can imagine. You can imagine. And I'm telling you, you're still wrong. It's still more expensive than you imagine. <laughs> yeah. E even initially starting to pull open a phone and look, and you're looking at places $500, $700 a night. Yeah. some some more than that so yeah. it was a really it was a really interesting experience so uh yeah Kristen I'm going to turn it over to you I you know lessons abound what did you say learning ensues I like that you put it like that it, it didn't feel like that to me initially I think the um uh the, the broad strokes of it for me was a lot around the uh expectations I'd sort of set for the trip mm. and I think part of me feels like uh, over the course of the so just the logistics of it were that we talked to some security guard and we um, went to my friend Justin's restaurant Honu which is incredible if you're in Maui ever it's the best meal we had there over and over again but so I called a few it was like phone a friend and check in on those things but like the first thing you're going to do right is you have this like mental internal inward check in and for me that didn't go very well um, just emotionally I think my response to it was you know, I'm someone who's walking around and talking about and teaching and, and training instructors even on resiliency, you know, using breath and shifting your state and all of that. And it felt to me like it was quite difficult to tap into any of that in that moment. And so really like walking through that for me felt like I set, set some expectations both around our travel, knowing it was your first time there and wanting you to Maui is absolutely my favorite place in the world. Mm -hmm. And so really wanting to share the spirit of that, the spirit of aloha and how much I love it, as well as setting an expectation that we had worked so hard for so long and that this was going to be a trip where there were the first 
couple of weeks that we were there, we were working remotely still, but the last couple of weeks we had specifically spoken to our families and said, great, we're going to just stay in Maui and it would be like relaxing and beautiful and romantic and rainbows and butterflies. (laughs) And I really wanted you to have that too, right? And be in service to that. So I had lots of expectations about how it would go or what I wanted it to be like and how amazing and, you know, sometimes best laid plans, as it were, go astray. And so for me, that was the, I think therein lies the rub. It's like mixing expectation with um, the ability to not step into the flow of downregulating and rolling with something that Mm. felt pretty traumatic. Yeah. Just hard hitting. I hate the word traumatic, so overused now, but it was just, it was was slightly traumatic, but it was really hard hitting because we just, ah, we wanted to land and exhale and we couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a, it was a, it was a year of incredible travel, lots of events, lots of new things, speaking engagements, an unbelievable number of podcasts and live appearances and both very ambitious careers in our, in our own arenas. And then to land and just, I remember feeling so tired, um, getting off the plane and feeling very, very burnt out and just longing, longing so deeply for a bed. You know, I just was, I was so excited to sleep for a couple of days. And I think that I had about, I had like four hours of being upset, maybe. And then once I got to sleep night one, I felt pretty good. I was like, okay, you know, what the, what the, the universe showed was like, people stepped up crazy. Uh, We had, we had dozens of friends calling friends of friends for Mm -hmm. places to stay I immediately found a really good friend, uh, Dr. Andrea Mills, who offered a room in her home. We had had your friend say we could stay there as long as we needed. We found so many different options. So I thought that was an incredible aspect of how community really does show up. Mm. I I think that, I think the ability to, and, and it was interesting me, um, in my position being gen- generally okay, but also like witnessing you having a really hard time until you had found a place that was going to match the expectation you had already laid out the six months prior mm-hmm. and, and really, really struggling to, to breathe and, and spending that, that first week, almost that first week being, you know, pretty upset, which I, you know, I don't, I never want anybody I care for to be in suffering. So it was hard for me to witness. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also the way we process is so different, right? This is like Mm. a learning in the world for any like couple or partners or besties or friends or colleagues or anything that there's a very different processing speed and style for many, many people. We're all very unique. And probably I'm sure if you looked it up, there's, you know, eight different types or something like that. But I think you process a lot internally. And I, 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 I think there's some need for that. Maybe needs the wrong word. I want to speak for you. But for me, there is a need a little to process externally, a little to process as a team. And this was something that felt like, mm, I haven't quite experienced my reaction to something the way that this one was. It was, it was just, uh, there was a lot of shame around it. You know, I, like I've, I've prided myself, you know, whatever that's for um, being such an amazing event planner. I did it for 15 years. I've produced thousand person festivals and libertarian communities where gun toting, pot smoking, Bitcoin carrying folk and, and done it really wildly successfully and comfortably and really never feeling like I was out of my element or out of sorts. And so this was like a really beautiful lesson. Mm. Well, also what the audience doesn't know is that the, the, when did you book the place and maybe like Oh, I booked the the place like six or seven months in advance yeah. and the Jeep and everything, all of that. Yeah. But what the audience doesn't know is from week one, Kristen was making a joke. She was like, you know, <laughs> it'll be funny when we show up in this place as a fake or fraudulent and continued to generally make this joke about the place not being real when Maybe we got there. I manifested there. it, Freddie. I don't think you manifested <laughs> it. But what I, I felt was is that there was a deep inner knowing on some level mm. that it possibly like this place for this price point, where you found it, how it popped up out of nowhere. Maybe there was an opportunity that, was, that, it, was, um, that it was not real. So we'd had this joke all the way up to the place and then it happens. 
So it was, yeah, there was a lot there. There was a lot of emotional charge. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was great. But then, so we should cut to. So we also just need to say, I would need to say this for me too. It's like I, we did our research. We had a contract. I checked the the travel number of the place that we rented from with the state of government of Hawaii. Like, and this is also what you're talking about—a deep inner knowing. I always do my legwork and make a space for Plan B. But the fact that I went so deep to be like, mm, "This guy's travel number is listed here. I'm going to check it with the government website of Hawaii to make sure it's a legit business." It's not because I've had. I think a little of it was because of the moving thing that happened with me when the movers disappeared with my stuff. Mm. What a year! And then this was a lot of lessons. And then this was like, so partially that, but then also I think that I had made that joke a few times and I was like, let me just like dig a little deeper. So it was like, you know, there were a lot of, it was a secure credit card server. It was a, or seemingly, right? I mean, this is the deepest con going and a contract that we both had seen and signed. And the guy was communicating. I say guy, the, the person was communicating me six, seven, eight, nine emails saying, yes, we have a blender sending me pictures. <laughs> And so it just felt real. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, I wanted to say that. It wasn't like I Great. just, you know, randomly yeah. pulled it out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> well, it wasn't real. And and at the end of the day, you know, we had to we had to pivot and we had to find housing and lodging or go home, which was also an option. We both had, you know, I think my parents offered they're like, listen, we have places for you to stay. We had we could have gone back to Austin, Texas. Um, I never once looked for a plane ticket home. Freddie definitely did. Yeah. I was yeah. not leaving. I was sleeping in the street, but it's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know I processing have to say speed. processing speed and frugality. Like I'm so frugal that I was aware, like when I started to look at prices for me, I was, start, you know, places that were not nice with a shared bathroom were still 10 to $15,000. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't feel like an option. Um, but what happened was we really had some people step forward. We had one of Kristen's clients step forward and offer a trade on a timeshare. And then we got two decently priced um, one and, and two week stays that really made up the lump sum for very comparable, maybe a little bit more to to what we initially paid. So it was it it was a huge save. You know, it was a great exercise in allowing and aloha, mm -hmm. practicing breath. And I think the, 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 the big thing that I, I want to say about the, the experience is the energy of, of bringing into, there's a certain need that you have after choosing not to take a vacation for 18 months. And that was terrible. What a, like, and in retrospect, what I felt was what a terrible decision to go that long being very, very earnest and I'll own it and proud of the work I do and loving my work so it never feels like it and not complimentary to the human nervous system design in, in no way does anyone ever need to work that hard and I hear this from so many of my friends oh I took a vacation two years ago you know I I haven't stopped working since we got through that first part of the pandemic so very common feedback I don't think this is we're not unique in this sense we're not but but it took me a long time to breathe and feel like I was on a vacation. It was very challenging. I'll, I'll be honest. I think there was a couple moments where I really felt deep relaxation. I had fun. It's beautiful. The scenery is beautiful. You know, all we could talk about all the things that we did, like scuba diving, surfing. But it was hard to feel that deep sense of ease, which feels interesting to say out loud because that's you know we're always doing these biohacking optimization technologies and events and retreats and breath work and ice baths to achieve these states and um, we're also labeling all the things that we do as things that we do and so there's this there's this um there's this list that continues to to be laid forth as we go through the year or we're like putting in the moment of okay well, we have an hour to down regulate and do breath work and red light and then it's bedtime or it's the next thing or it's a client or it's fitting in a postprandial walk or whatever but now we're on vacation and what does that really feel like i think it was also interesting for you and i to be there as a couple to i mean the biggest realization for me in the midst of all that was like oh there's no hiding how i'm going to be in this moment from freddie because it's cut too deep and i need to be this way and i have to understand that there's safety and vulnerability in this relationship where there isn't 
And so there were moments, and of course, in the beginning, I was like, this is a disaster and I'm so shameful about, the, is it my fault or whatever shit was coming up. But there was a, a, a moment, we were driving in the Jeep and, and there was a moment where I felt like, okay, all of this stuff is not real. And, and what's really real is this relationship and it's relationship is tried and true and our friendship and our love for each other is, is solid. Like you're, this is, there's no way for you to mask any of this, nor should you have to. Mm -hmm. And so that was a lot around emotional regulation. And then also recognition of, because I'm like doing the doing of the list of down regulation and the need to do the biohacking thing that when we show up there and I'm wanting to try to try to down regulate. And it's hard because your system is used to like little moments of down regulation and, and then lots of stress. So you have to, it's almost like you have to meditate the stress away to normalcy before you can have the vacation, mm. you know, and tap into the source. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's another thing that I picked up. It's like the, and I have no desire to go back to the, the again, the big takeaway for me was you don't have to wait and allow these moments to build and build and build to you need to off gas. Like I always say energy behind the action. It's like how you open the door and pick up the knife and greet the server and pay for your Uber and exit the taxi in all those actions is ease mm -hmm. or it's not. And, and I do try to do that, but I, I just, I, I, I'm aware of how valuable it is to maintain greater amounts of time in that state of being than it is to just off gas. Mm -hmm. And and I say off gas by the list, the yoga, jumping in cold for a minute. I mean, while those do from a neurotransmitter standpoint, bring the body into a new state, I find such greater value in just trying to bring ease into the day to day into each phone call transitions. And one thing that I'll do personally to, to do that to integrate that into my life is to set these boundaries and when people are pushing past that state where it doesn't feel easeful it's like um i'm putting the brakes on and i i intend to do that more in 2023 especially with especially with you know all the things we say yes to as far as as far as work yeah yeah and the the the, the takeaways for me that are like action items are really about we happen to see a lot of things happen on the news. I think we don't watch the news often, but in lots of places we say there was like news on and things, but there were like these moments in the news where it was like, you know, somebody's diagnosed with cancer or someone's hit by a car, or like these things are coming up and you start to realize, you know, I get it's all relative. I get that. And this like suffering component that you talked about. And then the conversation we had a, a bit when we were there about if, if you're going to say everything's a joyous miracle, then it's all a joyous miracle. You don't get to pick and choose what's the good and what's the bad. And so if this is happening, and I, I was saying this a lot in the early part of 2022 with the move, it's all happening for you, then it's happening for you. Yeah. And you just, you might not know why, and it, it's coming. The reason is coming. So just really trying to say, well, what's the joy in this, right? Maybe we bonded more with like Justin and Lisa and called a whole bunch of friends around the holiday season and then had community around us. But sort of taking that action item into things not feeling so heightened that the urgency or that the the gravity of some situations that I may see or um, want to like, okay, attack. This is like, I've noticed this in my work now since we came back from Maui that it's like an email comes in or something and I feel the immediacy of having to manage that and deal with it and move through it. And there's like a little bit of that thriving in chaos is the undertone there. Mm -hmm. And so really understanding how and what the prioritization is and really on the scale of what, how, what, how much gravity does this hold in this moment? It's not about who's important and who's not, but as I'm self-caring through the day. And so that's something that I'm continually looking at now the last couple of weeks since we've been back and I'm feeling like, oh, okay, great. This is a priority or this is not. Or what's the gravity of this that I need to feel like I have to answer this Instagram DM from someone I don't know at this moment? Right. It's like an, an intention to serve. And also it's not serving me and my self care. Yeah. Yeah. Intention to serve at the sacrifice of self, which is, a you know, it's again, it's a thing people need to feel into and find your own boundaries for. And you have to find out what works for you. I mean, I have the same thing. I'll go back at the end of the day and scan whoever responded to who have I not, who do I not feel comfortable turning off my phone at the end of the day and saying, well, that person can wait, that person can't because yeah. it can all feel they can all feel like a level 10. And, and I think that's, it goes back to this idea 
I think, you know, in this container of health and wellness and podcasting and coaching and entrepreneurial wellness, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of balls in the air. And so people dramatically overestimate what they can do in a day. I see this again and again and again. And I, I, I hear people tell me what they're doing and I'm, I know maybe it's happening, but it's not going to happen good for long. And there will be a time when you drop all the balls. And this isn't a, this isn't a secular thing when it comes to coaching and wellness and self care because no, it's both life. working with tons of people in the entrepreneurial right. space or leadership management and companies and it's just it's the same. I think it's and then we all got locked in our houses for two or three years and we worked harder. Mm. So yeah. yeah, but it was interesting what you said about the news. We were actually one of the fun things we did, which was transformational for me, and I and I wrote this really. Um, deeply it was like i sat down on my phone and i wrote this post about snorkeling mm -hmm. about being dragged across the reef and, and and i don't mean across the sharp reef i mean above the reef with all these the undercurrent, undercurrent yeah. these beautiful tropical fish and and it was amazing how none of them would fight the current they would just be swept like six feet ten feet sideways and then they would eat and then they'd make friends and then they'd be swept <laughs> like back and they'd make more friends and and I was just watching, just in this snorkeling moment, just watching the piece of how they were willing to be moved as nature, this invisible force in nature would take them. And it was a, it was a very profound lesson. And in that same moment, we had, we had witnessed, because we had the news on. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not news people, but it was just on because sometimes you're in an Airbnb or a, or, or a hotel yeah. and it's on and there was news of a, of a couple being out not far from where we were staying and a woman was taken mm -hmm. by a tiger shark yeah. and she, her body was never found. And, and it was like, I remember, you know, I have a deep fear of sharks. I had never been snorkeling. I had never been surfing. I was already nervous about it and just kept thinking about this. You know, we, we joke about perspective, but, it's like, can you imagine going to Maui for your holiday? You go there with your partner and then having to go back on a plane without your partner because they were literally taken by a shark. I can't imagine. And I'm, it was really important or it felt important that moment that we had in the midst of all this stuff that we were thinking, oh, this is so hard, quote unquote, you know, that we sat at a dinner and we like made a toast to that couple and to the woman and mm -hmm. just sort of set a, had a moment of silence for them. And it felt like, what am I complaining about? <laughs> you know, mm. it was like perspective really quick. Yeah. Right? But there's like, you never know what's going to happen next. So you got to love up on all the moments and all the people and all the situations best you can. Yeah. A hundred percent. I, I think that that's, I mean, listen, that's something that I feel I have a different scope of experience and sometimes I'll immediately go back to, well, like you're not in a hospital. Yeah. You're not in a, you're not in the ICU, you know, you're eating, you're walking, you're talking. It's great. And it's, I don't have a, you know, my scale of being like upset about something is different because of my lived experience. Totally. Um, and it was really beautiful to have that in the partnership. And I was really, yeah. um, you know, I don't want to use the word impressed or whatever, but I do think that it was like a very important lesson for me to see that I'm practicing all these things. And when you, when you have, you've had you know some bigger stumbles in your life or things come up in your lived experience as you say then you start to really get clear on what's important so i think there's a little bit of work in that arena for me and closing that gap as you put it so sweetly one day in the car when we were driving to kind of close the gap a bit more and understanding that and that's how you really know when you're tight with someone whether you like you love them or you're not you're close or your friends or you're it's like when you're someone's really in your sphere and then they kind of call you out and you're like, okay. And it's like bittersweet tasting going down. And then you think about it a bit and you're like, okay, it was like, maybe that wasn't the perfect moment for me <laughs> to say the thing or, but it's just a continued reminder of, I know that you say this, that you said that to me because you like care about me. And I think it takes a special person or a certain person. And we all have people in our inner circle that can actually speak the truth yeah. that we can hear. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I never, I never view it as a call out. It's like a call in to change 
because again, to live in that mindset is to live, we're like choosing to suffer and there's not a way out of it because they're living in a pool of shame or what, what, you know, if it's the container of shame or yeah. the container of self-loathing that, that, you know, you have to, um, release yourself of that. And I think that, yeah, I agree. It's like a special relationship when you can tell someone when you're not scared to speak your true feelings, not out of anger or rage, because you're like, I'm going to, I have to say this right now yeah. in some type of a loving way where if it can be an invitation, yeah. not a line in the sand, but just like, this is what I feel. This is what I see. This is my experience in the last 72 hours. Yeah. 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 Up leveling the communication. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of fun things. I love watching you snorkel and watching that whole experience. Cause I had done it before and scuba dived and stuff. And I just, I remember that as such a, poignant part of the experience which is the fish moving and then the fish also not bumping into each other and we're all these humans in the water sort of just like clunky as all get out the clunky as all get out and the fish are just so beautiful all the things we saw an octopus that was amazing surfing was super fun and then we, we just we can't end the podcast without talking about the one your favorite activity and you're not even going to know what i'm talking about freddie's favorite activity has to do with hot water, not cold water. Yes, toxic, <laughs> chlorine-filled, <laughs> neurotoxic hot tubs. But there was like, you know, we got to, we did a little um, hot tub, hot tub hopping, as it were. Whether we allowed, we were allowed to or not, I don't know. But um, we got to explore some of the some of the pools and hot tubs of various different resorts, and that was like probably something we wouldn't have done if we were all in one place all the time. Yeah, completely illegal. <laughs> I I still have this like very. Peter Pan Machiavellian streak in which I love to hot tub hop in the fancy hotels that I could never afford to stay in. And it's, I love it. So we like got into like some really fancy hotels and we went in their hot tub and we paraded around like we were guests and it was a great opportunity to perform a role. <laughs> it was so fun. It was fun. Yeah, so those are my a reminder to play. It's another piece of down regulation I think is is wonderful. It's like play and learn, learning new things. Like the surfing thing, I've tried so many times and not really been great at it and whatever that definition is. But I've been a beginner and couldn't really quite stand up and this I felt like I was more successful than any other attempt in this in this run. So I was like neurologically like learning new skills and that's yeah. really great and then also you feel so tight, like you're in the ocean all day. How much did we ground? And we saw the ocean, we're in the yeah. water every day. Every that day. was so important. Every day, it really didn't miss a day in the ocean. And the surfing was really in interesting because I had, I had like really dislocated my shoulder one day boogie boarding uh -huh. really bad, really bad. Like yeah. I had four days where I like just ringing headache, got clocked, pupils were dilated, probably had a concussion. <laughs> so um, much it was a trip to Maui. <laughs> Yeah, we should, and we should just mention we went on the road to Hana, where you drive around this really, really curvy road with all these switchbacks, and got so nauseous. He did. I uh, loved it. I was, I was passenger, and they say that the driver is much better suited to not have that experience. But, but swam in a waterfall, and that was worth it. Made it all worth it. But back to the surfing. The yeah. surfing was was really interesting. So, I. It, I'm I'm in some of the best shape that I've ever been moving towards some of the best shape I've ever been surfing was really interesting for me from a functionality of strength standpoint I found when I would lay on the board and you're prone on a board face down and you're you're in a almost like a baby cobra looking up so you're gazing for the wave to come over your right or left shoulder depend on when when the wave is where the wave is breaking and when I would jump up be, from being prone and being in that baby cobra, my because of where my scar tissue was, when I would stand up, I would have this like shooting pain in my back, in my lower back, and so much so where when I would jump up on the surfboard, I would like immediately go over, and it was so frustrating. I remember doing like four or five attempts, and Kristen is getting up like every single time and like riding the wave all the way in, and <laughs> this is the, our surfing coach. Turtle. <laughs> Turtle. Who is our surf company? Uh, Ma Maui Surf Co. It's like something very direct that you It's in, they were based in Kihei. Yeah, Maui Surf Co. So, and Turtle finally was like, let's. He was awesome. Yeah. He was awesome. He was like, let's stand you up on the board. Let me push you and a wave comes. And then I felt it once. 
and I could do it. My brain, my brain moved past like the pain, it moved past whatever wasn't connected from going from prone to popping up on my belly to standing. And, and then I, I pretty much, I don't think I ever fell again. I got up the whole of the rest of the two hours, but my body. I didn't see you fall. I mean, I saw you fall once or twice, but I was, so, you know, I'm so caught up in the, like the learning and the nervousness about standing that I didn't see any, I didn't see a lot of that. Cool you were process. surfing. I was surfing. I was falling. I just for the record, they're called Surf Club Maui. They were incredible. I've taken lots of surf lessons, with lots of good people, but they were so just customer service all day long, super friendly. I was. Because the other thing is I did a lesson without Freddie before Freddie came that day. Mm. And so I, I had started to get like the vibe of what it was about, you know, the surfing, the feel, the getting up on the board piece. So I had a little bit of a, a, a leg up in that regard anyway, because I had a few hours yeah. to try before. But they were so I was so nervous my first day out and they made me feel super comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, they were they were great. And they. Um, we're very, very kind. We have great pictures that we'll, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll post with this and some of our Instagram stories, but the, the insight for me, it was like, you know, building muscle and, um, building up your glutes and, and the backs and, you know, all these different areas of the body, if it's not functionally strong, um, you're going to have these huge gaps. So I had this huge really like a wave of frustration, but then a wave of excitement. And I was like, okay, here's a, here's a kinetic chain in my body that is completely broken, you know, going from prone to popping up on my feet. Uh, a deep lunge is still really hard for me. So I'm excited to be able to have access to this crew that we have access to, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the new fit, the ARX, um, elite PTs. We, we, we really, you know, we were on vacation, but we also got into some good biohacking. Dr. Andrea Mills had a technology called the soft wave, yeah. which is, it's called, it's TRT. It's a, it's a, it's an acoustic sound wave that travels through the body at 3,500 miles per hour. Wild. Yeah. And breaks up crep crepitus and stimulates stem cell production. And, and we did a couple treatments on that. So I got to work on some of these old Lyme joints and, it, it as frustrated as I was, I was like, oh my God, I have the tools and I have the team yeah. to be able to work through this. And then, and, and now I'm inspired to be able to get to a level of functionality so I could go to a surf camp. Yeah. Cause I loved it. Yeah. Like I loved it. Was it. Great. Yeah. And that stem cell, that stem cell treatment was really unbelievably shifting to that scar tissue that I had had for like pushing eight, 10 years. Do you want to tell people? Yeah, like I had a bike accident probably eight or nine years ago near the LA River in the dried beds in between LA and I had locked handlebars with locked handlebars, Freddie's checking my time, locked handlebars with someone who was going the opposite direction. So like if you think about like a road bike crossover style and the handlebars are hooked and so we literally came so close to each other that we meshed, we clinked handlebars and both of us went flying off our bikes. So it did pretty damaged. I had an L5 S1 injury. I couldn't walk for about, I mean, I walked like a 90 year old woman with a cane vibe, uh, I don't know, weeks and weeks. And, and that took a lot of rolfing. Rolfing was the thing that changed mm -hmm. the game for me to be able to get me back to a level one or two pain from a level nine pain and, um, and yoga. But that scar tissue was just that with that one knot of scar. Cause I landed on my left hip. I'd, I'd lived on and lived on and like, yeah. you know, I you were critical in the mirror. I noticed it in the shape of my body in tight clothes or a bathing suit or what have you. And it's like a pretty gnarly little like golf ball. And just in the two treatments, it's shifted so much, just so much. And like a little emotional release and stuff came from that. So there's yeah. like other oh, body keeps score for real. But it was pretty, that's some of the fastest change I've ever seen from a device. Me too. Soft wave. There'll be more. I just found a practitioner today in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to continue I always, I always, I always talk about where I first experienced like rheumatoid arthritis and Lyme was in my hands and feet and my knees and, and there's scar tissue there. Now, really funny. I didn't tell you this, but today I did x-rays on my knees and the guy was like, your knees look amazing. He's like the space in your joints and the room underneath the kneecap. And there's really no degeneration Great. in the joint, which I'm shocked by. Because I remember not having great x-rays 15 years ago. 
So it was really exciting to see that so much had been regenerated. Awesome. I mean, yeah, I know I, I need to go find because there was a diminished space in my knees in 2008. Mm. And so it just it gives testament to the pulsed electromagnetic field, amp coils, you know, the red light therapy, all the things that I do on the joints all the time mm. that really do move the needle and honestly, like reverse damage. Yeah, this is also the patience of progress. You have to follow the protocol. People have been writing me about the intravaginal red light device that I just posted about, and it's like, it will work if you use it with the protocol, and it won't work if you don't. And yeah. that's always important. And the one thing, don't leave out, that we got to do when we were there was we got to do a little Flopresso as well. I was I was thinking about that. So Flopresso, or Flopresso, as Flopresso. some people offer it softly, is a full body pressurized suit with elements of infrared heating technology as well as a frequency chip which goes on the base of the spine and it, it if you've ever seen like a pressurized massage suit the really cool thing about this suit is that each individual chamber like it'll do the the ankle and hold calf and hold thigh and hold moving the pressure up and then you just get this big release and so it feels like a full body hug mm -hmm. and Again, Dr. Andrea Mills, who is so kind, she has the Flopresso suit. She let us borrow it. We had a Flopresso for almost a week and a half in Maui. We did. I Flopressoed my tears away. Flopressoed your tears <laughs> away. It is good, it's isn't it? It's cozy. It's comfy. I have a couple clients now. There's, there's a place in Austin that has a Flopresso, and they've gone to a few sessions. I now went to a session. My first session ever was here. But it just over... You feel different after it. You feel... Um, my body generally feels better after the trip. Like even though there was a, some emotional strife in the midst of it and all of those lovely lessons that I'm so happy to have received, I, my body feels better. Just, I feel like we trained, we got in nature. We did some of the basics, right? This is about like when I'm home and I'm, if I skip the basics, if I layer on all the other things, it's just never as deep healing or recovery to my body as grounding, training with weights, looking at sunrise, you know, taking a walk after dinner, all those things that are so, I want to say they're free and accessible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I have to say that we did that pretty great every day, really almost did the gym most days, mm -hmm. up at dawn, always ending with sunrise in the water, in the salt water. The, the, I just wanted to mention one more thing. We had a really wild testimonial while we were in Maui, your friend, Justin, mm -hmm. who has... Uh, a, a high level of clinical grade gout mm -hmm. um, got in the flow Prezo suit and his inflammation was like, you could see the next day he gone. walked into the gym and we were like, whoa, gone. It looked like he lost five pounds or something. It looked like he was just like leaner. All his puffiness was gone. So it's really neat. It's really that technology excites me very much right now because it's, it feels like a hug mm -hmm. 40 minutes of being hugged. And if there was a deep need for the world, that's, for sure. And super down regulating to the nervous system. And, yeah. And it feels like the power of human touch and, and you get all of the benefits from it. Um, so let's, let's also, let's be mindful of time. It's, yeah. it's late for us here. We just had dinner. We're going to do a post prandial walk, but we had set the intention to do this in Maui and we just didn't. We thought there were lots of great lessons to come from this trip. And I think still will be unfolding as, as things evolved, but maybe you want to end with, um, what was one thing that you really took away from the island that was profound for you? I, I have to say across the board, it's just really, there's some, there's an energy in the island that, that for me feels shifting, state shifting. And also a lot of it is around nature, just seeing the power of mother nature and seeing you know, you don't have to snorkel off a fancy boat. You can walk down to one of the roads where there's some beautiful glassy water or a little like, you know, rift and it's not too many waves and you see just nature unfolding and life unfolding, you know, and you always talk about there's no placebo with animals, you know, and there's just, they're just in it. They're doing the thing. And the, the 10 or 15 minutes of walking in the sand or the swimming for an hour or the playing in the waves coming out of that 
it's just a new, it gives you a new lease on life. It was a strong reminder the entire trip from like the lava rock and the nature and the fish and everything, a strong reminder that I am not getting out into nature the way that I was in California in here in Austin. Of course I'm outside, but intentionally being in nature and grounding and mm -hmm. with trees and, and birds and I don't know, the stray cats in my backyard or whatever it must be here. But the nature piece was really big for me. Yeah. I think I was, it was, it, it was, as we talked about, I usually do my workout at night at the end of the day mm -hmm. and getting up at dawn and working out at six o'clock or seven in the morning, every single day was profound for me. It had a great, it had a great restructuring of how my energy flows. And I really, really want to commit to that. And I'm, even, even being back, it's, I don't know what it is. But there's something about waking up in Austin, and maybe it's because it's winter. Mm. Maybe it's because it's not as green. But it it's there's you don't have like a cute blonde chick next to you when you wake up. That's probably right. <laughs> that's probably right. But it's harder. It's been harder here. But I've I've been slowly. I haven't been working out late. I've been trying to go in the mornings. Mm. I really wanna. I really wanna keep that. And the other thing was like being in the water. Like I could just be in the water for hours and hours there playing in the waves. And, and, and it was just like pure, it was just ease and joy. Yeah. Like childlike, you really love the ocean. I it's love nice it. to see that. Yeah. My friend Christine said, she was like, well, of course you do. You're an Aquarius. Oh gosh. That's true. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, I guess that's right. So surf camp will be our next, well, like our next podcast will be after surf camp. <laughs> I would love to be able to, I got some work to do to do surf camp. And I, and I, I am, I'm literally strategizing. I'm calling um, my friend Elena from uh, Postural Restoration Institute, mm -hmm. um, PRI. And, and I really want to gain, and I just see this. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 45 in February. This is the season to build strength it, it is not going to get easier right like this is the time you got to figure it out this is the time and i i i don't i never look at these things as elective surgeries stem cells uh tissue regeneration um whatever it may be i'm like this is the season i'm like what are we waiting for like this is the time to get your shit together yeah. like to get functional to get functionally strong i i always have felt that but it's just um, life is so short and you don't need to spend it in a, you don't need to spend it in chronic pain. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, the piece of that that's important as well is those things sound like, wow, they probably have a high cost, but the, you know, the cost of not doing some things and it doesn't, it could be supplementation for some people, right. Depending on where you're at in your life, things that support, but getting outside, getting functional movement, getting mobility, like they're all things that are multiple tiers of ways that you can spend your, your budget, your health budget on, as well as things that are a deeper dive. If you have some chronic issues, you know, that you're helping so many people. I hear you on so many calls about, you know, whether it be Amcoil or these other tools that you know about, just helping people through that. So it's a good reminder of this other important piece, which is context. So I love that you're, because you dance and you sing and you're fit and you're a biohacker and you have all the tools and then you're like, oh, I found something new and I want to be able to layer context into my training now. Mm -hmm. And quite often I run into people that are kind of throwing all the things against the wall and saying, what do I do? You know, and it's, it's if you want to run a marathon, you got to train the parts of your body that are going to help you run that marathon with ease as much yeah. as possible. So it, it's a really interesting sp space to be in. I mean, I feel feel very strong. Mm -hmm. Like I look in the mirror and I was like, what? You look great. But I, I also feel incredibly weak as far as like moving through different planes and more so than I've ever felt. So, um, again, I'm, I'm excited to, to tackle that, but I see how important it is. And I don't, I, I know all the things I listed. Yes, they do. It's an investment. It's expensive. With the things we spend our priority on, I don't know. Uh, 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 that we, we the priority spending in in the United States is so off and driven by, you know, marketing. Yeah. You know, we just have piles and piles of shit in our homes that we don't use. I think I wore. I'm joking, but I'm not joking. 
I honestly, I have these green pants on from Roan. Roan, oh my god! Which they're expensive pants. Everybody go out and buy Roan pants. Like they don't make women's clothes. How do you spell it? I'm not trying to be an advertiser, but I'm telling you, R H O N E. Freddie can wear these pants up in the morning. He could sleep in them if he wanted, but he, up in the morning, put the pants on, go into the gym. He can go to like church, go to the beach, drop them in the sand 14 piles later, spill food all over them, give it a little wipe down, and then go out to the fanciest dinner at night and all in the same pair of pants. And they're just durable as all get out. And they look fantastic on him. And it's like Noah Husman and, and CJ and like that crew really loves Roan. And I was like, oh, you got to get a pair, of the, a pair of these pants. And I just... Just saying, men out there or women out there, buy your men some own pants. They're yeah, good. they're they're good. But you need to like that one pair of pants, right? You you, I literally <laughs> wore I wore surf shorts mm -hmm. and I wore a couple t-shirts and I wore these pants and one dress shirt. I could I looked at the majority of the clothes that I brought I never wore, <laughs> and it's it's not because I but I just think you know there is something to this. Steve Jobs have a few outfits. Listen, I understand everybody has a different way of expressing themselves. Mine is not through clothing. I could be very simple and I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to have like three pairs of pants and three shirts and that's going to be the jam. Great. Everything else goes into the body. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a fun trip with you. It was all, a fun all trip. Included, all included. I think yeah. We, we learned a lot. We laughed a lot. We loved a lot. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. I cannot wait to go back. I feel like I have a deep respect and understanding for the island and the volcanoes and the turtles and all the turtles. Oh my God, we saw a giant sea turtle. It's so amazing. Don't touch the sea turtles. You can't do that on the island. Um, that's it. That's it for me. Um, I love you guys. I yeah, we love you. I'll put this one right out. This will probably come up next week. And there'll be more from the Beautifully Broken podcast and Well Power, the Well Power podcast. Yeah. We're so happy to be together sharing with you. <laughs> Love you guys. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Bye. Post Brandio. Oh.